Hey Ross, sauce it up. Yo, for this video, we need 300 likes. If everyone can go leave a like so we can see who's really tuning in, it's gonna help our shit go way up on the suggested and the homepage and the browse page. So yeah, leave a like for us, thank you. From now on, we're gonna be dropping our crazy clothes the last Sunday of every month. The last Sunday of every month. So this last Sunday will be February the 28th and we're dropping six products. So we need everybody to go cop that. If you have the app, download the Denied Approval app. If you have a phone or internet, go on the fucking Denied Approval website and show some support. If you cop it, you'll be let into our new page, Denied Approval Daily. If you don't know what it is, go to the Denied Approval page and you'll see it in the bio. Denied Approval Daily, the last Sunday drop and download the app, thanks. Thank you so much. I almost flopped. Thank yeah, you so much, bro. I almost lost my lens. And now I'm about to lose them. I was supposed to follow them. All right, I'm gonna have to make it happen. I'm gonna have to make it count. We're on the red light. Okay. What you doing right now? What am I doing right now? Well, just chilling on top of the hill. As you can see, is in the back of our house. Uh, this week was just like, kind of just a blur, but there was a lot of shit going on. We had Joe's birthday. We shot a commercial with karaoke. Wednesday, Thursday, karaoke was running in and out of trippies. Me, Yanni, Joe, uh, we stayed back and we were just recording music. I recorded probably three songs. He went over to his crib. Well, I'll let karaoke explain that story, but he went to the crib, ended up shooting a video. It ended up being fire as fuck. One of karaoke's most creative, like, fire videos. And it showed off because I guess Trippy really fucked with it and he dropped it. Shared it a couple times, put it on his story. Buzz out now, Trippy Red, you already know that. That video was fire. That shit is going up and hopefully that shit creates new opportunities for us here at the Nine Approval for sure. So for this week, I have a couple things to do. I have to finish editing two Trippy Red videos that I shot. Um, I shot those earlier this week with my homie Chris Long. We linked up and we were just hanging out at Trippy's house and he was shooting some photos. And I, I took the slow-mo clip of Trippy and I just showed him and I was like, yo, this shit's fire. And he was like, bro, it is fire. Like, we should shoot a video right now. And I think he was kind of joking, but like me and Chris Long just looked at each other. We were like, no, we should shoot a video right now. And so uh, we, we shot a quick video right there, edited the video that night. And then the next day they dropped it and Chris Long hit me. He was like, yo, Trippy wants to shoot another video. No, so Trippy done. Red just posted the video on his Instagram and he said 30k and he dropped it and he hit 30k in 20 minutes. Yeah. It's out, son. Let's go. Let's go watch it. Is there? Yeah. Too hard. I told Chris, I was like, if it doesn't drop ASAP, it's yeah, not coming out. Oh, yeah, bro. And usually when an artist watches it over and over again, bro, I'm dropping that. Yeah. So unexpected. Yeah. Amazing, bro. All right, continue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, 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 uh. I said, drink it. Yeah. Uh, I can't thank it. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. 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 250 in my whip and it got no tip and it more like a hot wheel Catch one of you bitch niggas on the internet book and I'ma hit you with a whip wheel Niggas ain't big real big, got a chubby on my waist, that'll take down on you Let's fucking go! Let's go shoot another one Let's do it! Alright, let's go crazy, let's go crazy Alright, I'll let you know, I'm gonna jump in the shower and I'll text you I'm gonna head right up Alright, bet so we're about to go shoot another one, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm just pulling up on my boy Chris Long. They called me today. I think we're gonna double down and shoot another video. Pulled up, we shot another music video, and then I was editing that video at the house, just chilling, and then they were like, yo, we're gonna shoot one more. So we shot three videos total in a span of two days. And they both came on fire. Right now I'm just working on them and we did a couple extra things for this one. We did some uh, eight millimeter stuff. We did some uh, 3D photos, some photography. We're really gonna do a lot of like mixed media for K-Swab featuring Trippy Red. So it's taking a little bit longer, but they're both on the way. Usually to shoot a music video, it only takes me an hour or so. The reason is, is because of just the style of how I do it. What I, I try to really capture real life. I don't really try to alter too many things and by alter i mean like i don't bring additional lighting 
I have one lens. I actually have two lenses now, but I have two lenses, one camera that I've had my entire life. Like, I don't change up what I do. I'm doing the same thing I was doing at 15 years old in, I don't know, high school. I haven't changed it at all. So I try to keep my style like super similar. And just from doing that year after year after year, editing video after video, I kind of know exactly what the video needs. I pull up to a spot, I think about when I edit the video, I'm gonna need the intro clips, let me get the performance, some B-roll while I'm doing the performance, the performance shots and in the middle of the video, performance shots towards the end, B-roll, B-roll. I can kind of picture the whole thing in my head. So to shoot a video, it usually only takes anywhere from an hour to like three hours. And if it's three hours, the song is probably either long or the person just can't remember the lyrics. So usually an hour to three hours. Now when it comes to editing a music video, if I really, really love the song, it's gonna be done in one day. It will be done in 24 hours. If I don't love the song that much, but I do like the video, I'd say it'll probably be done in about four days. Now, if I take a long time on the video, it's because I liked the song, I did it too much and I burnt myself out, needed a break from it and never came back. And that's what happens a lot of the times. So I try now to only do music videos that I love the song, I love the video for it, and I make sure that it's fun so that I'm not burnt out, I'm not tired of seeing this person's face or voice. But yeah. There's not much sleep involved around the time of music video lock-ins. When I do music videos, I, I like to just like encompass myself in that world of the song. And then usually by the time I get home, it's like 10 o'clock. By the time the footage loads in and it renders and all that, it's like 11 and I'm still just getting excited to see it. The first thing I always do when I edit a music video is color it. So then by the time you know it, I, I'm done just looking at what it would look like colored like one of the clips by two in the morning. And I'm like, yeah, I want to start editing. So then I just go to town editing. Next thing you know, I look up, it's 5 a.m. and I already ruined my day. So I might as well finish it. So then I just go and I just edit until it's done. So no, I don't see. Okay. Hold up, so what up? What's up, gang? Good. Right now we're out here editing the Chippy Red Buzz video. We've been at it for like, what, two days? Yeah, yeah. Two days, yeah. Two days. Getting this shit done. So, it's Joe Maya's birthday. Cheers. For Anjo's birthday, we had fucking some crazy ass food, karaoke snap. Yeah, so for those of you that aren't aware by now, I do this cooking thing. Like, I do it. He made some bomb ass shit, rice, potatoes, steak, lobster, salmon. I'm allergic to shellfish though, for anyone that's wondering. Yeah, probably no one cares, but for my fans that do care. Other than that, Joe's shit was fire. We smoked backwood after backwood after backwood. Backwards, it's ready, roll it up with weed and moon rocks. <laughs> Played a whole bunch of video games. We have put the TV downstairs now instead of in the studio. So we've been playing a lot of Madden, 2K, sport games, you know, typical, typical dude shit. Nah, his birthday was fire as fuck. We drank a lot of Modelo's. Yeah, it was a little slower than usual. We didn't get fucked up. We just got really high and just went to sleep early. <laughs> How do I see 2021 going? Hmm. I see this being the year that changes my life for sure. I think there's gonna be a lot of different shit. We're gonna have our own space, our own warehouse, our own store, our own whatever that we can achieve. We're gonna get that this year. I've been spending a lot of time this week just brainstorming how I'm gonna attack this year and how I'm gonna drop a lot this year because I'm really trying to take more ownership into it and being able to just create that myself and being able to create that world, you know? So I've just been, you know, focused on that. Mentally, I think this year there's a lot of changes when it comes to personal growth though. I have a lot of that I've been working on, you know, I've been too stuck working and not paying attention to that actually matters. I haven't been tapping in with my family. I haven't been really just taking care of myself and I'm just over that. I'm tired of like arguing and I'm tired of all that. That shit is behind me. I'm really over it. I'm really trying real hard this year to change as a person and just be the best person I can be. I've been starting to get into reading and working out more, eating healthy, just enjoying my life. Like I'm tired of letting the small details take over my whole life and letting it be a part of who I am. All that overthinking and all that doesn't really help you at all. As long as you stay true to yourself, stay true to your mind and your heart, you're always gonna succeed. And that's my goal this year. I'm really trying to connect my mind and my heart and be able to fucking actually be myself again. Hey Ross, sauce it up.
Right now, 2021 is looking pretty promising. I'm not disappointed, it's only the second month and we've gotten a couple of our goals out the way. Um, I have a couple personal goals I wanna achieve, some physically, some mentally. Physically, as you guys might and I hope be able to tell, I've been losing some weight. I started probably about like eight months ago, maybe, whatever, like August of last year was. I don't know how long ago that was. But I was like 280 pounds then, and right now it's February and I'm 230 pounds. So my goal, like, I, I don't even know what I would look like skinny. I don't think I even want to be skinny. My goal would probably be to get to like 210 to 215. So like, I only really want to lose like 15 more pounds. So that's like one of my physical goals. I want to start getting more sleep. I want to start, I'm already eating better, but just eating better more often. And then for mental goals, I kind of just want to be more independent. A lot of times I rely on my friends to like help me do work rather than me just doing the work. So I really want to be independent more, expand my creativity. I feel like a lot of my style has been slightly based off laziness of just like, not wanting to learn certain things and it's worked for me for a long time but i feel like now that i'm at the point where i've solidified my style it's not bad to introduce some things back into my swag my bucket list for this year is finding a team that works as hard as i do that is my, my bucket list i'm always like one more thing that i'm like if i had this i would be okay but if i had this i would be where i need to be i feel like for me the one thing is people around me that can do what I need done. I already, like I said, I already have a team, but I really need to lock that shit in and get something that's like just a open workhorse. Yo, what up? So I have a fire opportunity. I don't know who it's for yet, but it's for somebody on here. We're looking to add a videographer and editor to our team, and this is how it's gonna work. One of you is already ready. One of you people watching this has been ready for this opportunity. You've just been waiting. So this is how it's gonna go. You're gonna send us a DM that you know you can continue doing for denied approval. You're gonna fly out here tomorrow. If you can't come tomorrow, the opportunity's not for you. You're gonna move in with us and you're gonna work your fucking ass off. And we're gonna go crazy. We're not trying to find anyone that's in it for some clout shit. Someone that wants to be a part of this team and go crazy. So basically, I've gone through a lot of people, and by gone through, I mean have given them an opportunity to move in with me or live with me or teach them everything I know in hopes that they'll be able to help me run my business, and then they leave with the things I taught them and do it for somebody else. It's just a common thing that happens. You know, you come, you teach them, and for a while they work for the experience, and then they feel like they can do it without you, so they leave and they do it without you. And it's just something like, like I've gone through this probably 15 times, you know, of just people that I've like put my all into and tried to help bring them up and grow them as a person. I feel like what, what happens is they people feel like they need to get away from me to have an identity of their own, you know? And I think that's totally wrong. I think that it comes with the mindset. But anyways, this time I did it a little different. I didn't do it with any incentives or I'm gonna do this for you, I'm gonna do that for you. This one I just said, yo, who wants to come help me build it up? Like who's willing to work for free, sleep on the couch, buy your own plane ticket here, like basically just put in like the most unnecessary work and hours to prove themselves and give themselves a shot at being a part of this team. And so a couple people hit me up, probably like 10. Five of them made arrangements to actually come out here, then kind of flopped. And so one kid, bought his ticket and it got canceled because of the storms in Texas and shit, that's where he's from. And so he had to come out today. So it's a day later, but he's out here and we're on our way to go pick him up. So we're about to meet the new intern and see uh, what he's all about. Yo. Yo, what's up? What up gang, where you at? What up? Uh, I'm on Terminal F, uh, 4F. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's right. This is crazy. I know, right? <laughs> okay. yeah. you got it? Yeah. But you didn't just come just go. Just go? Yeah. All right, but what up, man? How you feeling? Yeah. This is pretty crazy. Like yeah, I've never man. been to the city. You never been to LA? Nah, hell. That's far. This is like this is like a whole different breed of people. It feels different too. I've been watching your music videos for a while. Like, really? You, you film for some of my favorite rappers. That's far. <laughs> I, I like on show, but I'm geeking right now. That's too far. <laughs> what's your like, favorite? What's your tree, favorite video? Tracy. Oh, wait, that one's goaded. Yeah, bro. that's a legendary video of Matt Ox. Yeah, like, Matt Ox the goat. Def, like, no one, like, people are figuring it out. But, He's like, the future. Yeah. We had to get the first time in LA, in and out trip. It's his first time here. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, bro. Yeah, you fucking with it? Hell yeah. I've I never had this before. Style.
too crazy, man. What the fuck with that video, man? Oh, that shit was so far. Yeah, I fucked with it. Yeah, I like that. It's hard. We got, we got a couple more on the way. What you been up to, though? You in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, whenever you uh, pop up to LA, man, hit me. Nigga, this shit has to be everywhere. Locked in another video with Lil Boat, man. We moved the little homie in, and there's no more rooms here, so we're making the closet into a bedroom. It's big enough. Anyone saying that it's not big enough, it's big enough. I've lived in a closet in LA a couple times. You could put a bed in here, plenty of room. So right now, I'm working on the February 28th drop, anticipated to be our biggest drop ever. I say that because I haven't really been able to go like full crazy with the clothes because last year we tried to go full crazy with the clothes too fast and we had one hiccup that fucked us up financially. So I had to literally throughout the whole coronavirus just like work my ass up, try to get back in a good spot, but also try to keep growing stuff like uh, from moving out of my car to getting this crib. Like there were so many things going on while trying to pay off debt while trying to make more money because it's a pandemic and the election came. There was literally like thing after thing that kept fucking me up. So I'm trying to make 10K this drop. I've never made 10K. The most I've ever made on one drop was 5K. But I believe that with the support of our people and with everything that's happening right now and the amount of work we've been putting in, I think 10K is very possible. So for me right now, 2021 is looking like 200 orders. That's what I'm trying to get. 200 orders. As soon as that happens, then I'll introduce the next thing for 2021. So it's kind of funny, like when I made that hoodie that says 2020 is the new 2016, it was hard to get then because it wasn't 2020 yet. And people didn't understand what 2020 was gonna be. And then the pandemic came. So it's kind of fucked up, man. But 2021 is kind of the new 2020. And 2020 was the new 2016. So technically by default of pandemic, 2021 is the new 2016. And by that, I mean, 2021 is a year of a rebirth. The same thing as 2016, it was a rebirth in the culture where people like academics and Adam22 and all these like influencers could shift the culture. And you had people like Lucas Sabat and you had people like Ian Connor creating these waves of culture. And I feel like since then, it's been people trying to replicate that. It's been people trying to uh, fake it. It's been all this, these like imitations of it. And I feel like what the virus did was completely broke down all that shit. And now we're at this rebirth again, where these new people of the culture are gonna create these new things. Like think about the influence one like Tyler the Creator had. Someone like that had to come up at a time like that for it to turn into what it did. And so I feel like right now is gonna be the rebirth of all those new people coming to do what they're coming to do.